Okay, onto the hips. Self-made fascial release the hips. And the front of the hip more today. Okay, we're going to do some work on the back of the hip another time, but the front of the hips, open up these hip flexors. And then we're going to do a mobility drill, a little bit of a stretch mobility drill, okay? Now, three tools we're going to use for this. This is the sole right. I have look, these at home. I also have one here that I leave for you guys. It's quite an unpleasant device for most people. So the sole is a big, powerful muscle, powerful, powerful hip flexor. And they attach to the head of your femur, your hip bone, and each individual lumbar vertebrae. So they stabilize the spine, they're a huge spine stabilizer, but they flex the hip very, very strong and powerful. They stiffen a lot of people. And we also, we need to have that length tension relationship, if you like. In other words, if they're stiff, they can't be strong. So they're quite often weak in people. So we need to release them, but also strengthen them. So strengthen is, is what we're doing here for another day, but this tool can be very, very nasty, but freaking awesome at the same time, so effective. Essentially what we're gonna do is we position our belly. If you wanna use this here, make sure you don't drop it. It's quite brittle, it's quite hard. It's like having a massage hand stuck in there, okay? So if you imagine your belly button aiming for the center of that. So here I am. And we're going to last sort of sphinx position and just gently wriggle into it. <laughs> gently release into it. And then again, I'm, all I'm gonna do is just gently shift my weight here. And I'm getting a little bit of circular action. I can go up and down. It's nice and slow. I'm trying to feel those soles muscles. You know when you're on them. There we go, that side. And it's just keeping calm. And I would suggest again, you could do maybe 30 seconds on each side, a minute on each side if you wanted to. Once you, you sort of learn to love this, it gets quite addictive because you know, if you have sometimes have a stiff back, you have a sore lower back, and you know it's not like a joint pain more of that short musculature and you release these sores and you think holy shit in 30 seconds I feel like a, a new man you know I feel very very different all right so if you've not got one of those and you don't want to use the one here next best option a big ball think about the front of your bony hip so that ASIS okay front of your bony pelvis there, pelvis there and your belly button it's a straight line Dissect that line fifth, about halfway, and that's where you put the ball. There or thereabouts, that's just a starting point. And then you plant it on there, and again, look what I've done with this leg, it's out to the side, and I'm moving that up. That's really quite effective as well, very, very nice. Before I had the sole right, I used to do this with the ball off, and that's very, very effective, don't get me wrong. It's just not quite as direct, it's not quite as deep. So that might suit you for now. Oh, that's actually very good there. Again, don't go too fast. Be those four seconds, four seconds, four times, or 30 seconds. And again, you've got to learn to like pry and seek out those spots. Do you know what one of the, one of the methods they actually, the Metallica song actually, because that's always, I always remember it, seek and destroy. Some self and my thoughts are released, depends on what it is, that's what you're looking for. You're smoothly looking for, oh, there's a sore spot, and then you stay on it. Now again, I'm not really bothered about the research that says that's not the best thing to do before you work out because it inhibits you. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking about elite athletes. If it's making us safer in the long haul, it's making us more open, go for it. I don't care about not splitting hairs with all that at the moment, okay? But just do this stuff to free your hips. All right. Then the other one is the, the good old roller. So we're going to roll the front of the thigh here. We can also get into this hip flexor here. That's sort of an iliacus area. We're going to go slightly ahead. I'm not going to go IT band. I'm just going to go outside of the quad, center of the quad, and hip flexor. Look at your hip flexor here first. So one of the quad muscles is a hip flexor as well. So same, sort of different. We're going to turn this to 45 degrees. It's going out this time. So if I have two rollers, it will be an arrowhead pointing back behind. And then I put my hip across it. Just watch the twigs and berries, because you want to make sure you're dressing on the right side for this one, otherwise it'll be a painful experience. And I'm just going across that little stiff hip flexor there. Okay, so I'm right in the crease of my hip, if you like. Small little movements. Maybe we do four of them, four seconds each side. And um, we can also do this sort of thing, internally and externally rotate. 
Maybe we do four of those, just that pin and move. Beautiful. And then I could, just with a little shift, go straight at the belly of the muscle. Just above the knee. Now with this being a big muscle, I'm going to work it too hard. So I'm going to just go to halfway. So it's four seconds to halfway, four seconds down, four repetitions. Alrighty, so this is my repetition two. And this is repetition three. And this is, I can feel my legs are sore, so needing this. It's just really, really nice to do. And you can do this in front of the TV at night. I'm going to rotate a little bit, so you can see how the foot is now not pointing straight down. So I'm just going on the outside of the quad, not on the IT band. You can see the angle of my foot around about 45 degrees. So this is vastus lateralis. This is one of the quad muscles. It's the lateral side. You even learn to speak Latin if you're lucky enough. I'm still working that bottom side. So four seconds up to halfway, four seconds down. So just above the knee. Alrighty. That's good, good, good. No, I don't have to really break strut and I can work the top half now. So I've done the top half, I'm still at this 45 degree angle. To halfway. So just to the crease of the hip. And to halfway. So all while I'm doing this, with all these like four sections if you like, I'm finding a sore part again. And I definitely have one around right about there. So I'm going to remember that spot. I've had I've got quite a bit of scar tissue in my thigh. From kickboxing days, some of the muscles really like real knots, hard and dear knots in there. And you never sort of really calcified. You get that sort of calcification in there, getting kicked to the thighs. Very pleasant. Uh, all right, then I can move back to pointing straight down, right at the belly of the muscle, halfway, and to the crease of the hip. All right, now this is as bad. It's still it's still here. I have a little bit of a sore spot there, a little stiff spot, but it's not quite as bad as that other spot that I was talking about. So when I've done my four repetitions again, up and down to that halfway, but I'm just going to go back to. That sorry spot right there, and then a pin, and move. Again, that seat. So, so see how I'm, what I'm doing now, even just being, being on there, is, I could weight out that tension, but just bending that knee, whoa, so that's, I can't move it much more than that because it becomes quite painful. Now that's not a bad thing, as long as I can stay relaxed, but hey, presto, that is. A little bit more each time, remember, scratch the surface of pain, it's not a sharp joint pain, that's why we move with slow and controlled movement. But it is releasing. I have to take my time, do some TLC. And then I can just roll it out that little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so if I've done obviously both sides now, I want to stretch this side. We're just going to, that's all I'm going to show you today, this is nice mobility drill, it's strengthening as well if we've mastered this tilt and tuck. So if I'm on this tall kneeling position and I step forward, I can also step out, which is a good thing because I get to uh, extend the hip but also abduct it. We need a little bit more of that as well. So, foot stays pointing straight ahead, square the pelvis off, open your abdominal panel, stick your tailbone on, that's the tilt. Then we strongly tuck. I'm really tucking the tail off, trying to get the tail right underneath. Really cr crunching down, but then lengthening through the crown of the head. If I want to use the hands here to keep long, that's cool, because I want this flat back. And then as I go forward, exhale. I don't want to release this at all. When I exhale and go forward, it's only a little movement, but I've got a big stretch around here. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Push it down to left. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe you do five, ten of those, and I'm going to go for like say, a 30 second hold. Here. I'm going to remember, don't let that fatigue and lose that posture. Give it a nice stretch around here. Okay? Now, release, do the other side, of course. I'm going to leave it there today. You can do a lot of other stuff, and you understand that this, when I mentioned, one of your quad muscles is also a hip flexor. 
So we, we have to flex the knee and extend the hip if we want to stretch that. So you see people who do, you could elevate the foot, starting out doing that, what we've just done, with the foot elevated just that little bit, is going to change it, it's going to access that more. As we get better and better and better, we, you see people holding up here, but then what they tend to do is collapse through there. So you, can, you should only be doing that if, I mean that's a big stretch for me. Um, you should only be doing that step by step again. Sometimes it's far better to start at level one. Oh, it's always better to start at level one, own that. And if you really want to get that deeper stretch down those quads, speak to me, we'll put another video up down the track anyway.